Welcome to Veronica Live, and we are here with our next guest. Oh, I've been excited to chat with her, Dr. Jessica Spencer. She uh, is fighting the fight against the pot amendment three here in Florida that is on the ballot. And Jessica, I am fired up over here. So welcome to Veronica Live. (laughs) Well, I'm glad you're fired up. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I just texted you before you came on, literally before I started doing my show today, I got this massive postcard with President Trump on it saying how he's voting for Amendment 3, you know, because we've got needless arrests and incarcerations, and I, I'm, oh, I've got steam coming out my out of my ears. I'm just so angry about this. I, Florida does not want this, so how do you see all no. of this? I mean, if we want to, do you want me to address the Trump support or do you want me to just address the issue? I don't even know where to begin with any of that. All right. Well, let's start with the issue and then we'll, then we'll talk about Trump. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, I mean, this is, this has been my field for a long time, substance abuse prevention, intervention, treatment. So obviously I am concerned about this being legalized recreationally in our state. But, you know, I'm almost more concerned about the fact that it's a constitutional amendment. So I am super excited to be here. Again, thank you so much for having me. And I think it's important for your listeners to understand, if they don't already, you know, that the constitutional amendment, if it passes, will forever be enshrined in our Constitution as written. And there are so many issues and concerns with the language in this particular amendment we have to vote no. Just on the face of it, we have to vote no. Without even getting into the, the nitty-gritty of all of it, there are major problems. And a constitutional amendment supersedes all law in our state, right? So this isn't something that we can legislate our way out of. When the legislature, if this passes, which it won't because everyone's going to vote no, the legislature has to put in an implementing bill. And the language in their bill has to be consistent with the language of the amendment. And again, that's where we run into major problems because if we don't like the way it's written and if we have any question about any part of it, we will not be able to fix it later on down the road. Our legislators do not have the ability to do that. So I would urge all of your readers, understanding how constitutional amendments work, not only to vote no, but don't just take my word for it, go read the amendment yourself. It's four pages. It's a pretty easy read and look at what's in there, but also what's not in there. Well, that's funny because I wasn't thinking, I, you know, I was just concerned about it being legal. I wasn't thinking about the, that part of it that you've just hammered home, um, you know, cause I, cause I have James Madison put out a really nice little booklet that John and I have been referring to. And we've had a bunch of representatives. Um, we just had one on prior to you, uh, representative Dr. Joel Rudman, who's a doctor. And so he's ticked about this cause he sees it up close with patients, how bad marijuana is. But you know, the overall description says legalizes recreational marijuana f- for Floridians and out of state visitors, 21 and older. And so, so what, I mean, that's bad for me. I don't want people smoking marijuana around the around our state. I've been to states now, um, Seattle. I, I was in Vegas the weekend it became legal. It was the most horrific experience of my life. And then I go to New York City all the time, and you just smell it everywhere. Mm. So I, mm-hmm. I just I just fear that that's going to be Florida. But dot, dot, dot. For sure. We have literally, I think I can count six dispensaries that have popped up here for medical marijuana, which I'm pro-medical marijuana if you're suffering. So I feel like people can have access to pot. <laughs> so, so Well, they do. And there's, there's a, a, a huge piece of that, too. So the medical, you know, there's been sort of this thought process. And I want, you know, if listeners are concerned about the medical piece, I want them to understand that a vote no on Amendment 3 keeps the medical marijuana law that we have here now status quo. It does okay. not affect and I love medical that. marijuana here in our state. Correct. Yep. And, and then uh, let's get back to, to why it's bad. I, I guess one of the things that, that shocked me, and I've talked with all the representatives, and then I, I went through your website and you know read read all of the – the things that you all are posting, and I know um, the governor is definitely on board with voting no for this. Um, 
I, where, I mean, where do we go from here to stop this? The money that these people have uh, true leaf has pumped in here, $75 million at least already. It, like that's scandalous to me and the corporate greed. So, so chat about that and explain why this is a bad thing. I will. And I, I want to talk about the corporate greed and I want to touch on one thing too, where you talk about the smell. And yes. then I will okay. absolutely go into into the, the so mega marijuana monopoly that we're looking at. <laughs> there really is. There is not enough time in the day for this. No. But, you know, to your point about the smell, absolutely. Um, huge issue in other states with recreational marijuana. And shoot, I mean, it's a huge problem right now, even with medical here. We already smell it here in right, Florida. Right. So the main issue when it comes to smoking in public that we need to be mindful and when, you know, your listeners and when yourself, if you're reading the amendment, We have to be very clear that the author did not put in anything that would allow the legislature or local municipalities to ban public smoking. And literally all they needed to do was strike through one word in the amendment language. They just needed to strike through the word medical, and it would have given the state and local municipalities the opportunity to ban smoking in public, and they didn't do it. So literally we would have the ability to smell marijuana everywhere and anywhere in our state. And there is not a darn thing that anybody can do about it because again, constitutional law, if you try to change, amend, make a bit a bill or, or make an ordinance or, or whatever, you will not be consistent with the language of the amendment. And when we talk about, you know, again, the mega marijuana monopoly corporation industry, they did this on purpose, right? They, they left specific things out. And when we talk about why this is a mega marijuana monopoly, I think you've already alluded to how much money has been dumped into this, right? And the Shocking. big issue is, right, it's, it's stunning. It's, it's, it's stunning. Um, but they've put so much money into this, and they effectively ban home grow which is something yes, that people... Yes, I wanted you know, to ask you about that too. Yeah. Well, they, they're, they're, again, working with this monopoly. They're, they're driving consumer base, right? And you don't spend that much money because you're interested in creating a backyard competitor, right? You are creating consumers. And so they purposely left out the word cultivate as it relates to individuals. So some have already come up and, and, you know, when we're having these conversations, like, oh, but it'll be great because I'll be able to grow. And I'm like, listen, this is not about your personal freedom. (laughs) This is about corporate greed from this particular industry. And again, you know, we go back to they just needed to strike one word for smoking in public. They just needed to add one word, cultivate when referencing individuals. But they didn't because this it would hurt their bottom line. And they are the only ones that have come out publicly and actually bragged about how much money this industry will bring in for them in our state. And it's it's stunning. It's shocking. It's sad. And we don't want or need this here in our state. Well, I saw that in your media clips. It said six that the the CEO of Trulief was like saying that this was going to be a six billion dollar market. And so $75 million to this woman CEO is nothing. It's like 20 bucks to if you're going to bring in that kind of money. And again, she's, she mentioned $6 billion industry. I mean, that's wild, right? It's wild to some of us it's to insane. even try to, to wrap our heads. Right. It's, it's wild to try to wrap our head around that number, right? And, you know, on top of that, this would actually make us the largest legal cannabis market in the nation oh, and not just not the want nation, this. the world. Yeah. We don't. So when we, you know, when we hear about the horrors that are happening in, you know, Colorado, California, Washington, et cetera, et cetera. And we think about, wow, there's so much marijuana being sold out there. That is a drop in the bucket as to what the industry has already come out to say we will look like. We will lead the nation. And then internationally, we will lead the world in legal cannabis market. Well, so, um, so, go ahead, John. So I say, Dr. Spencer, one of, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, you know, we're just talking about the, the smoke and the smell and stuff, is, is you know, with cigarettes, there's always a thing about secondhand smoke, you know, and affecting mm-hmm. kids and that kind of stuff in the home. It, do you see the same kind of effects with marijuana? I mean, does it have the same, does, does is the drug, drug transferred through secondhand smoke? 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, and listen, it's just as basic as saying we're not supposed to inhale anything other than oxygen, right? So it would stand to reason that you're not supposed to in, inhale a combusted plant, a combusted material. So there's, of course, secondhand effects to that. And we don't want to smell it. And, you know, we have the Clean Indoor Air Act here in Florida for a reason, because we didn't want to inhale tobacco smoke. We didn't want to be subject to it. If you want to go smoke your cigarette, that's fine. I understand. It's, it's an addiction. It's, you got to have it. Go smoke it somewhere else, right? And so we have the Clean Indoor Air Act. That doesn't apply to marijuana smoke. So we will not be able to fall under that as a protection for those of us that don't want to inhale it or don't want our children to be subject to inhaling it or breathing in that toxic, essentially carcinogen. Um, and again, the this, this smoke, all of it. We don't want this in our state. It doesn't belong in our neighborhoods. It doesn't belong in our communities. And it certainly doesn't belong in our state constitution. So um, I, I was very impressed that uh, the CEO of Citadel that moved down here from Chicago, because I guess it wasn't a great yeah. place, has donated $12 million to fight this. So so tell me about that relationship, because, you know, it's, it's not like Chicago's, uh, Chicago has lots of issues, and I'm sure pot, pot's part of the problem. So, you know, he doesn't want that in Florida. I was, I was so impressed, because I, I, it's the first time I read this, was getting ready for you to come on. Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously super grateful. It's it's great. It's it's helpful for us. We needed it, and I'm super appreciative. I'm thankful for everybody that's donated to the campaign. I don't know why he did it except for that he cares about Florida, and he doesn't want Florida to look like these other states. And I would encourage, just like you did, I would encourage your listeners to read his op-ed and get a real understanding why he cares about this state. And again, you know, the only people that have really bragged about how much money they're they're making or spending on this initiative is the mega marijuana corporations. Yeah, it's it's embarrassing. So let's talk um, about like, uh, for example, Senator Joe Gruters. I, I was so disappointed that he came out now and um, and is for Amendment three. And I've had a, you know, Chairman Evan Power on, uh, the representative, Dr. Joel Gr- uh, Redman that just came on. Our representative was just on last week, and they are against it. So so why do you think he partnered with, you know, the other side? I'm, I'm just shocked. Because pot I'm, to me, and you're, I'm, and I'm shocked. you're a doctor, <laughs> and you see these well, not people. Well, not a fancy doctor. I'm not okay, a fancy well, doctor, but I, I definitely, I, I have a doctorate, yes. Okay. I work very hard for that. <laughs> well, and, and, I mean, you you deal with these people that obviously have smoked pot, so, so, so yes. is it, yes. I mean, to me, it's a gateway drug. Is it not a gateway drug? I ask people like you that all the time. Yeah, and I think this is where we get into that, that. There's a little bit of an argument about that, right? And and you have individuals that will say, well, I've been smoking pot for decades, and I haven't used anything else. And I always say, well, good for you. Like, that's awesome. I, I'm, I'm glad for you, and that's wonderful. But for the individuals that we see in treatment, that's not the case. They couldn't stop at marijuana. They, they kept using other substances. They either started with marijuana, tobacco, alcohol, or sneaking prescription drugs. So... I, great, that's wonderful, but that's not that's not the story of everybody, right? So we have to pay attention and we have to be cognizant of these other individuals that are suffering from addiction and didn't just start out with hard drugs. They started out with those other drugs. Um, and as far as, you know, our elected officials and, and Senator Gruters and, and, you know, he's a smart man. So I am, I'm surprised. I'm dismayed. I'm confused. Well, that's me because um, he's been going yeah. places. He's been going places. I don't climbing under- the, you know, the ladder of right. Florida. So I, I'm just blown away. Yeah, no. And I, and I don't get it, but I don't try to get it either. Right. Because politicians on both sides of this issue are going to have opinions. And the bottom line is people are going to make their own decision on this. And this is why I encourage all of your listeners and everyone to read the amendment and understand the impact that this will have and not necessarily look to elected leaders, which I don't think they do, for what decisions they are going to make on a constitutional amendment issue. So I don't know why he did it. I don't know why he's doing it. I don't know why President Trump is doing it. And I'm really not that concerned about it because, again, if we even want to look at President Trump or Joe Gruder's, you know, if we're, we're trying to say, well, oh, it's, it's the Republican Party, we can actually go and look at Matt Gates, who is pro-marijuana, 
He's a millennial. He is pro pot and he is actually against this amendment. So that says more about the amendment than it does who's for or against it. Well, I, I had a, a guest on a political pundit here in Florida and he's and he's friends with Joe and he he said Joe's been open about it, Senator Gruders, that it's to keep the the pot. Um, safe for people that t- you know take it so d- there's nothing else in it but i i'm i'm anti this is a nikki freed agenda item why would i ever support this to to trash our and, state and, and you know the other the other issue is the potency thing that and that's what really bothers me you know this is for I, sure and I, I, i'm sure you 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 could probably agree or, or probably know far more than i do about it but you know your homegrown pot or the pot from you know i'm, I'm 69 years old okay the pot from when i was a teenager <laughs> is nothing yeah. compared to what it is today and this, this stuff this super super THC stuff that you can that you can get in these dispensaries is, is there right. is there any desire to control that or or is that even being discussed well i mean the desire to control it is to vote no on amendment 3 right yeah. and then you know it, it's funny that you mentioned that because just a couple of days ago the yes campaign you know posted how well You know, during, I think it was Nixon, they may have put it out, I can't remember, but I believe it was the Nixon era, you know, that even Nixon said that, oh, there was nothing wrong with marijuana. I can't remember what the exact thing is. You can find it on X. And it's funny that they're going all the way back to, you know, the the 60s and 70s to talk about how, oh, it wasn't a big deal back then, or even like you're saying, the potency of it. Because in the 1960s and 70s, we were looking at 0.75 to 3% THC content in your raw herbal marijuana. Right. And now, prime example, if you go to some of these websites and you look at what the strains are now, the strains of the marijuana, they're boasting upwards of 35 percent THC. So to your point, you're absolutely correct. That's an issue. If we recognize that people were getting stoned and high at Woodstock in the 60s and 70s and again, during the, the, the era that they're referencing, however many decades ago that is with 50, I don't math very well. I think it's at least five decades 50, ago, yeah. Yeah. right? <laughs> sure. it, it's nowhere near the potency. In fact, it's what you're selling, again, mega marijuana corporations, industry, et cetera, are, are upwards of 30% THC, THC, and that's just for the raw herbal material. We're not even talking about the oils and the vapes and the shatter that they're selling. That's 70, 80, 95% THC. Mm. Well, scandalous. Is, there, is, is there any way for the legislature to control that? I mean, even if this thing passes, I mean, is that is that just or is the sky the limit? Whatever they want to shove out the door. Well, the sky's you know, they... the limit because again, I mean, there, nothing in here in this language in the amendment says that they can regulate or even put the cap on the potency, right? So again, you're going to be inconsistent with the language of the amendment because they don't even mention potency. Now, they do mention, so you'll find this interesting because you'll understand, they do allow three ounces for individuals to possess, which is the nation's highest limit. Three ounces, you could roll 100 to 150 joints or pack a cone, as the kids call it now. That's a lot of weed. Oh, my gosh. These are things I don't know. Oh, my goodness. That's scandalous. Well, on the on the postcard that um, my still have steam coming out of my ears with President <laughs> Trump on it. It's a quote from oh, September no. 8th, and it, he says in the quote, I believe it's time to end needless arrests and incarcerations of adults for small amounts of marijuana for personal use. We must implement smart regulations while providing access for adults to safe, tested product. As a Floridian, I'll be voting yes, and this is blown up and highlighted on Amendment 3 this November. And I'm fine with, um, you know, and that was that was another fallacy, too, that the, the prisons are full of, you know, potheads. And I, Correct. I, I get, and, and I saw on, on your website, I think you guys, you know, you put that to bed, that that's not true. Because they're, they, yeah, they smoked pot, but they also, like, robbed a bank. That's why they're in jail. Right. Um, you know? Right. Exactly. So, yeah, so. And, and that's what it does. It fascinates me. I was just in a debate the other day and it, the same issue came up and I'm fascinated by it. But to exactly your point, this has already been debunked. Why are you still using this as a talking point? It's not true. Yeah. It's just not true. You're entitled to your own opinion. You are not entitled to your own facts. 
And the fact is there are zero individuals that are in prison, incarcerated for simple marijuana possession. It's just not true. We have debunked it. And yet it's still a talking point of theirs that I am fascinated by because, again, there's 37 people that are imprisoned for simple possession. But what you need to understand about that is that is coupled with, like you said, other higher level offenses. There is no one in our jails and prisons for simple marijuana possession charges. And it's actually offensive that they believe that we as Floridians are going to continue to to pay attention to this false narrative and vote yes. Because we're not. We're going to vote no because it's a flat out lie. It's not true. It's been debunked. And and I'm pro, um, you know, if somebody does have it, let's find the hell out of them. You know, uh, is that Listen, your initiative? We, I mean, what what, what is vote yeah, no on three I, doing? None of us want kids or young adults to be in jail for simple marijuana possession or, or holding a joint. None of us do. Like, that's preposterous to think that anybody in the state of Florida would support that. What I would be interested in is the conversations around civil citation programs, the conversations around drug courts, which, by the way, if an adolescent is caught with a joint or more than that, typically, there are drug courts and juvenile drug courts in place for them. And there's there's opportunities for treatment services and interventions that the other side just isn't even talking about. So, again, yeah, we don't want people in jail for that. But the fact is they're not. They're not. And to say that they are is a flat-out lie. It's insulting to Floridians who are quite intelligent. And then it's insulting to our our first responders and our law enforcement and our public defenders and our state attorneys because it's just simply not happening. So so I've heard heard John Morgan say that, you know, that, you know, we need to approve Amendment Three and then and then after it's approved, we need to go and let all all the people in in jail that are that were in there convicted for marijuana possession out. So you know that's well, kind I of. Well, I hope you have a little Tonka truck or a Matchbox car <laughs> because that is how many zero would fit into. I mean, it's just it's not true. It's not true. And if that's all that you continue to have, that is your talking point. That says again more about your amendment than it does about the actual real issues because it's 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 just not true it's i don't know how many times i can say this i'm always jumping up and down it's you know, not the, true it's been the, debunked the, the, the problem the problem that you're having and i and i understand this very well being having been in politics for quite a while here you, yeah. you're you're trying to fight an emotional response that's oh we have all these right. people in 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 jail you know oh that's a terrible thing you know versus yeah. the facts well, the facts are right. there's nobody in jail. Okay, <laughs> the fact is this, right. this this stuff is dangerous, and and right. the facts never trump the emotion. That's the problem that that oh. we're having. Oh, because that was the whole and DNC. Also, I, it was all emotion. Well, when we talked about too, it's we didn't. We're we're not in dispute of our belief system that individuals shouldn't be in jail for that amount. We're not right. disputing that. We're on the right. same page. But then don't turn around and lie to Floridians and say that there are all these people in jail and prisons for a simple marijuana possession. You well, can't play that's and why pray, we're doing this. Pray you know, emotion. And the reason but, but, I found you all was because I follow uh, Christina. I can never say her last name. Push Pushwa. Um, oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like one of your number one cheerleaders for Amendment Three and Amendment Four. So <laughs> I, 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 I need to I need to get to her because she's amazing. I want to have her on. But she literally oh, like awesome. like today she's she's always like she's already posted stuff. Um, two things, three things on your from your page. Uh, you Aww. know, so so I love that. She's fighting the fight, and obviously the governor's on yes. board with this. Um, yes. I mean, how are, how are why are you, first I want to ask you, why are you so passionate about this? Because I see that you were the face of this when it was vote no on um, two, two, or two campaigns uh-huh. to defeat yeah. this before. So why, why are you so passionate? I mean, I'm a retired military officer. John was in the military. We, Thank I've you. never done a drug ever. My drug is a, a college girl drink uh, on a weekend, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't understand why somebody would want this. And especially now when it doesn't seem like it's the levels of like what John was talking about, about the good old days, right. which, you know, I've, I've never done a single drug ever. And I, I don't know why somebody would want this in their body, but, but why are you so passionate, Dr. Spencer, about this? Well, 
thank you both for your service too. I'm I come from a, a military family, and I, I appreciate your service, and I appreciate all of our first responders and our military. So thank you. And I mean, for me, it comes down to this is my area of expertise, right? I mean, I mm-hmm. have worked in the substance use prevention field, working you know specifically with adolescents for about 24 years, and I see the devastation that this drug can eventually cause, whether it be as simple as, and it's not simple, but it is it's smaller on the scale of full-blown addiction to, you know, more dangerous drugs. Um, I shouldn't say more dangerous drugs, but drugs in general and, and, and moving on to other drugs. You know, even if a kid skips school because they're high or because they were high the night before and they couldn't wake up the next day, et cetera, I worry about kids. I worry about the exposure that recreational marijuana, again, when this industry says they're going to triple the market, that means ex- increased exposure to our children. And I'm concerned about that because they are our next generation, our next bright hope, right? We should be raising them with clear brains, not flooded with messages that marijuana is just wonderful and it, it's not a problem and it doesn't do any cognitive damage, physical damage. There's nothing wrong with this. We're sending the wrong message to our children, And not only are we sending the wrong message to our children, but as we see in other states, there are accidental exposures. There's overexposure. We have, you know, children and young adults and even older adults ending up in our emergency rooms because the potency of these products is through the roof. And a child is not going to be able to tell between your gummy bear that you have that is loaded with THC that you're only supposed to eat maybe half of, right? and a bag of gummy bears that they eat with their friends. And they're going to keep eating them and eating them and eating them, and they're going to over-ingest, and they're going to be in the hospitals, and that's what we're concerned about. And we're concerned about how this changes how parents parent. You know, they're going to have to think about things differently, as they do in other states that have recreational marijuana. You know, do you send your child over to Johnny's house, whose parents may use or who maybe has a 21-year-old brother that still lives at home or, or sister that still lives at home, and uses marijuana and you don't want your child exposed to it, it changes the whole dynamic of our state. It doesn't belong here. It doesn't belong in our state constitution. And we all have to vote no in November and send a very clear message to this insidious mega marijuana industry. We don't want you here and don't come back. So, so how much do we know about, about these, this, these potent versions? I mean, have there been very, very many studies done on this stuff? I mean, you know, we've, we've seen the thing with the school shooter. There's been there's been linking, you know, these school shooters. Most of them are on marijuana or have a history of being on marijuana and, and they have the psychosis in, induced from that. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, so is there is there been any correlation studies to say, you know, 20 percent THC, you get this 30 percent, you get this level. Um, no, no I, not that I've seen specifically with the, the actual, like between a 20% and a 30%, you see something different. I will say that the studies are out there about just high potency marijuana in and of itself. And I think this is what's super hard for people to kind of grasp and understand. And I think it's because it's so outrageous and not outrageous in, a, oh, I can't believe that, but it's outrageous and oh goodness we need to do something about this epidemic because this is an epidemic and you're absolutely right there is cannabis induced psychosis there's lots of mental health issues that we see that happens among you know young people and then into young adulthood and there's major concerns about that I don't get too far into the weeds, for lack of a better word, about <laughs> that issue because it's it's really hard for people to conceptualize, right? If you don't experience it yourself, and, and kind of to your point too, John, a lot of people just don't understand the potency, right? And they're like, oh, it's just pot. Like I smoked in high school, no big deal. They don't understand it, and it's really hard for people to conceptualize what's actually happening with a lot of individuals that are consistently smoking this high potent, consistently ingesting this high potent candies, um, oils, et cetera, and what can potentially happen. So again, you know, I choose to focus on the issues about the constitutional amendment language itself and not get too far down the line on all of these other issues. But I promise you, you are dead on. And these are major concerns that our, your listeners should be paying attention to 
But at the very least, I would love for them to read the amendment and understand the language that's in it and why we do not want this in our state. It doesn't belong in our Constitution, and we need to vote no in November. So, so, so uh, on on second and third order effects here, you know, is 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 that I, I know you're kind of discounting that, but uh, be, being as a first order effect being don't pass the, res- <laughs> the constitutional amendment. But uh, wh- why why is that not discussed? I, I mean, what what is it? They, we the, talk about you know, recreational stuff, freedom and all this kind of stuff. But we don't uh-huh. talk about the second and third order effects of, of this stuff. I think it's difficult for people to conceptualize, like I said. I think it's it's hard for people to understand and appreciate it. And listen, see how it took me how many minutes to explain about the THC content, and then I haven't even gone into where THC lives in your body and why that's an issue, right? So it's yeah. not it's not an elevator speech that takes thirty seconds to explain to someone. And it's not for lack of people being smart enough to get it. We absolutely are, but it's not a, a quick enough explanation that they're like oh okay and then you really have to think about it so it's a tougher conversation i love the conversation i love the education of it all because i think it really is important as you're saying for people to understand what the secondary and tertiary effects are of marijuana use and not only consistently but even just in the short term when we're talking about young people's brains well, and I think like um, I, I've seen it on X. I've read articles about it. Like for example, Colorado, it's you know legal, and so all of these people move to Colorado because they want to smoke pot every day, and it's been madness. <laughs> they don't want to work, you know, because it it kind of takes away your drive. I think. I mean, this is your world. Um, what what is the pushback been? Because uh, you know, I see on your your ex, you, somebody went and debated Leon County, and it was spirited over there. Um, <laughs> yeah, and now and now we're talking. <laughs> yeah, did you have your your, your no, you know vote no uh, pot leaf with the Ghostbuster you know little thing on it um, yeah. and flak vest you know? But my question is, what is the pushback been? Because you're talking money now. And, and right. money, people, people do awful things when they're trying to get power and money. And $75 million, even though, you know, against six, say $6 billion is nothing, that's still a lot of money. So are, are, are you getting pushback? That's one back? company. Yeah. I, I mean, because, I mean, they, they, want, they want to get in here. And, you know, $12 million versus 75 there's still a substantial more money they have. True. Um, and again, you're absolutely right. It's they're insidious. This, this the mega marijuana corporations and their desire to be in our state um, overrides, you know, what they they claim to be safe. And it's just not. I mean, it's a fallacy. It's, it's an absolute fallacy to say that this will be safe and regulated, because, again, any other state that has legalized recreational marijuana, they see the black market explode. And why is that? It's because when you put it in the storefront, it costs more money. And where would I rather go and get it? The less expensive place. That's true. I, well, I'm just scandalized at all the medical dispensaries that have popped up in our town. I mean, that, that's the interesting. It's like McDonald's. Right, that's the interesting part. The, the, med, the medical thing was sold They're on everywhere. the back. That, right. It's not a big deal. There's not a whole lot of people. Twelve years ago, exist. there was one. But, because but, I, right. now they're, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And you have, you have 300 and bucks, they go, will go automatically right. right and they will automatically be able to sell recreational oh so they're so they're gearing up well that's scaring me thinking about it now because <laughs> literally I'm not kidding in the last six months there are so many new ones around here um, so so how are you getting your message out because luckily I bumped into you all in X and, and I started stalking you to come on um, <laughs> because I I, I, you know, maybe it's because I am that military woman and, and drugs are bad and I want our children to not be on drugs, you know, um, and I, and, and plus I've been to all these damn states where you smell it all the time and it's horrific. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, the, the industry themselves, they've come out and said that they, they will have a pot shop on every corner. Uh, they liken it to Walmart and CVS, and they will oh. be everywhere. So they've already told us what to anticipate and what we will be basically inundated with. And, you know, we fight back with facts. We fight back with truth. And, and 
we do the best we can and we will go anywhere and talk to anybody. So I appreciate you stalking us. You can find us on <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, and our website. And of course on X. Um, so yeah. And, and feel free to, again, check out our website, see what points. No, we, I, I we liked have it. Out there. I liked all the media, you know, stories. Yeah. I, I mean, cause it, they were eye opening. I didn't know about the Citadel guy, you know, and, but- and yeah. and then and then the the CEO of True Leaf was so nonchalant about the whole thing. I'm like, oh my gosh. Maybe it's time they... to start start playing uh, Reefer Madness again. You know. Oh <laughs> I goodness. I, I I don't know if you remember that. But, yeah, uh, I don't know what ago, that is, Sean. I'm much younger Madness. than you. <laughs> it, it was it I, was yeah. a, a movie, you know, a cult movie. Oh god. <laughs> oh goodness gracious. <laughs> Uh I mean, again, we have to pay attention. You know, when you do talk about the money, the only organization on any side of this argument who has gone on record and talk about how this amendment passing would be great for their bottom line. And again, they've been braggadocious about it and said it would be historic is the mega marijuana companies, period. And so they're not again, it's about money. It's not about personal freedom. It's not about safety. This is about how much money is going to be made in this industry. A six billion dollar industry that will triple the so, marijuana market. So let in me Florida. ask you one more question because um, we had uh, the New York Times bestselling author of the Soros Agenda on, and um, Soros George Soros has been the daddy of pushing pot. He wants it everywhere, um, and I think it's the numbing of society. Are you are you seeing his money here as well when it comes to wanting to make this legal? You know, that I don't know. I, I, I don't math very well, so I try to leave all of the finances and everything to, you know, all of the others in the campaign. They're a heck of a lot smarter than I am, and I focus on the issues of the amendment. Okay. And then I um, back to Governor DeSantis. I know he's standing right there with you. Yes. So, well, what have we missed? Yes, we appreciate it. Dr. Jessica I, I mean, Spencer. I, I, I think we've talked about it all, but there's there's still more to talk about. But we, I guess we're we. I'll have to come back on. Yes, we'd love to have you on. You know, to yes. end of October and see you know how it's going, and then you know I, I hope you're getting booked on everybody's shows around the state because we we need this out there. I, I am open to all possibilities, and I'm excited. Um, I am excited about the, the efforts that we have. And, you know, I'm, I'm confident because once people hear and read the truth of what's in that amendment and what's not in that amendment, they are a no vote, and they will vote no in November. So I am confident that we will take care of this, and this is not, this is not going to be in our state. Well, I'm going to burn this postcard that I got right before you came, literally, right before you came on. And, um, Don't smoke it. Don't smoke it now. <laughs> right. Uh, no. And, and uh, we've been talking with Dr. Jessica Spencer. She is the advocacy director and she, perfect woman for the job. Uh, vote no on Amendment 3. And this really matters for the great state of Florida. So God bless you, doctor. And we'll have you back again on Veronica Live. Thank you so much, Veronica and John.